What if I told you that these two images were the same? The same waterfalls shot at the same time, using the same equipment, the same lighting, exactly the same except for one small but very important detail, and that's perspective. You'd probably say you should do a video about that, and you'd be right, so here we go. So the first thing that I consider when shooting any photograph is what focal length to use. And that's because that controls your perspective. Perspective being basically the interaction between the subjects in your photograph. Your main subject, your foreground, your background, and how they all interact with each other in the space. So let's go back to the example I showed before with the waterfalls. This is Cascadilla Falls in Ithaca, New York. And on a side note, if you love waterfalls, the central New York Finger Lakes region Ithaca in particular is one of the best in the world. So if you're ever in the area, definitely check it out. The shot on the left is shot at 24 millimeters. The shot on the right is shot at 135 millimeters. Now, if you look at both images closely, you can see they're really the same shot. Check that rock with the leaf on it in the bottom right corner. You can see that's the same thing. And if you look at the contours of the falls and the way everything lays out, you can see it's really the same waterfalls. But these are two vastly different images because of the focal length used and the way the perspective changes between the two. So you see how focal length makes a huge difference in what your final image looks like. And that's one of the reasons that I love shooting prime lenses because I already have a whole set of prime focal lengths in my mind going into each situation. And I actually compose based on the perspective that I want before I even put the lens on my camera. So I made some pretty fun examples using one of my favorite subjects in the world, the partner statue in Disney World. So let's check that out. This first shot is at 24 millimeters. Um, it's just a nice shot of the partner statue and you can see the perspective of the area around it, the whole hub area and the castle. The castle is really just a, a tiny little thing behind them, um, almost completely blocked by the statue. Um, if I move back a few steps and switch to 35 millimeters, keeping the same framing of the statue, uh, you can see how the perspective starts to change and you get a little bit of a better view on the castle. The framing is a little bit nicer. Um, it doesn't change a lot, it changes a little bit. But now if I take a few steps back further from that, switch to 50 millimeters, again, keeping the framing of the partner statue exactly the same, you can see now the castle is much more prominent in the shot. It's really a much nicer shot, uh, the way that the castle frames the partner statue, uh, much different shot than the 24 millimeters that we started with. Then if I take a bunch more steps way further back and put on a 135 millimeter lens and take the same shot again, you can really see how the perspective totally changes. The castle now just becomes like a backdrop uh, behind the statue, filling the whole frame behind them. So let's run back through those focal lengths again, starting with 24, 35, 50, and 135. And you can see what a huge difference the focal length makes and what a huge difference in perspective there is using the same subject for each of those images. And now you can apply this principle to any photographic situation. You know, any way you're shooting, you know, let's say you want to get a wide shot. You want to have that nice uh, wide perspective. You want your subject to be really big, you know, in relation to the environment around it. And you get your shot and you're happy with it. Don't be finished there. Take it a step further and, you know, put on a telephoto lens or put on a mid-range 50 millimeter lens um, and shoot the same subjects. Shoot the scene over again uh, using a different focal length. And you'll be surprised sometimes what a different perspective brings to the same photograph. You know, it's funny, we say, you know, Disney World is a great place to learn and practice photography. Uh, it's like photography boot camp. Um, when I was in China last year, um, in Xi'an, we went to uh, this wild goose pagoda. And the first thing I thought here, you can see this image, the first thing I thought here was partner statue. You have the statue of the monk out in front with the pagoda in the background, and it was the first thing I thought of was, Walt and Mickey with Cinderella Castle behind them. And I shot the scene the same way that I would have if I was standing in the hub in Magic Kingdom. So that's really what I'm doing in almost every situation is going into the situation knowing basically what I want my composition to be, what I want my framing to be, but then using different things, you know, using different focal lengths, using different perspectives to try to get a different take, a different angle on the same subject. If you're using a zoom lens, use four or five different focal lengths along the zoom to try to get the same shot. I think you'll be happy and surprised sometimes at the different ways you can get different images. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the kind of videos that we're doing here, we're gonna be doing a lot more stuff like this. Subscribe to the channel and click on that little notification bell this way you get notified every time we post a video. Thanks for following along and I'll see you next time.